Thank you to everyone uh, for uh, this kind invitation. And uh, I, I will try to give you a, a brief perspective and overview of what is going on in the frame of the international cooperation. Uh, when uh, I was asked to, to do this, uh, this speech, uh, I, the first question I had was uh, really where, where, where we start, because international cooperation and deep space are a pretty large argument. And uh, so, I mean, I was obliged uh, to think and to start uh, from the International Space Station, because uh, as of today, this is the largest human body, that uh, human-made body in space that was uh, built up in international cooperation. It, it, it is a project that was uh, uh, done by five participating agencies, the, the Americans, uh, the, the, the Russian, the Japanese, the European, and the Canadian, uh, with several partners. The Italian Space Agency was uh, one of that. And it was serviced uh, uh, by a variety of visiting spacecraft uh, from different countries as well and from astronaut, cosmonaut, and even space tourists from 17 different countries. And we are proud of what we have been capable to do from our company, because we were basically building almost 40% of the pressurized volume of the space station. Uh, and, uh, and what you can see on the chart is basically what we call the big seven, or the seven elements uh, that, that we built. But now we have to think what we have to do in the future. And uh, so, of course, we have our ideas. But as uh, every industry, we are obviously inspired by what is being done in terms of the agency. And uh, so I would like to recall uh, what is uh, the, the GAR, which is the Global Exploration uh, Roadmap uh, that was uh, recently issued. Again, this is uh, done uh, by a contribution of 14 uh, space agencies. Uh, you see that all the points highlighted in yellow call uh, several times uh, cooperation and international effort. And this really reflects a coordinated effort. I was involved in, in, in a study in the past uh, following this uh, global exploration map. I can tell you that there were a period in which it was not clear where we were uh, going to, to, to do our deep space. Uh, some, someone was thinking about uh, deep space uh, in terms of asteroid. Others wanted to, to, to pass through the moon. Others wanted to go immediately close to Mars. Uh, now I think there is a convergence. Uh, and uh, for the first time, it has been introduced uh, this concept of the cislunar deep uh, space gateway that is actually the, the first next step beyond LEO on which uh, I think agency and uh, the industry will, uh, will have to work. So this is also in line uh, with, uh, with NASA uh, vision uh, that conceived uh, this uh, uh, exploration for the spaces is now on as it was already done in the past in, in, in full partnership. And uh, you can see that uh, basically there are uh, two major phases for what concerns uh, this uh, deep space gateway. Actually, phase zero is the one where we are today, because we still have uh, the International Space Station. It has been completed, it is permanently visited, but as a matter of fact, we are still using it uh, as a technology test bench for the technologies that are needed for the, for the exploration. Uh, before, maybe it was more uh, focused on, uh, on science, uh, but now really we are thinking to use it as a technology test bed. And uh, you see that uh, before really going to, to Mars, uh, which are the phase three and phase four, uh, to put uh, men uh, around Mars and then to land on Mars, we have to pass through some intermediate step. step uh, and in particular, phase one, which is the one of the deep space gateway, the, the first part. 
is uh, to place a sort of infrastructure uh, uh, orbiting around uh, the moon in the proximity of the moon uh, based on uh, some key elements, uh, an habitat module and propulsion module. Uh, this will not be a replication for the moment being of the International Space Station. It's more a sort of an outpost that will be visited uh, for relatively short uh, mission for the first period by the crew of Orion, but uh, will serve as a technology test bed for the exploration. It's the first time we will be in an environment uh, representative of the deep space gate, of the deep space, and it will be the, the point from where we can support a mission to the moon uh, uh, because there is the intention to, to be back on the moon. And uh, it will be used also to support the preparation of the phase two, which is the deep space transport. This is another kind of, uh, actually, uh, vehicle or spacecraft because it's, it's a spacecraft that will have a permanent crew and uh, we'll uh, start uh, to make a journey in, into the space up to 1,000 uh, days. Uh, so that, that is definitely the spacecraft uh, in which we will have uh, uh, the possibility to experience what means uh, to start sending humans uh, so far from, uh, from our Earth, in particular because we will lose uh, the capability to rely on uh, logistic services from, uh, from Earth. And this is the reference architecture. And by talking of International Space Station, this is again a study that is being done by the, the feasibility study has been performed uh, uh, by the same group uh, of uh, the uh, space agency that uh, basically were the one that uh, conceived uh, the International Space Station. It's a group called uh, IECST, that stands for ISS Exploration Capability Study Team. And uh, in the frame of this uh, international cooperation, uh, ESA has been supported since the very beginning uh, by its own uh, European industry. Uh, our company has been involved uh, together with other uh, three, four companies in, in Europe. Uh, and the result of this uh, <coughs> study that we have supported to the agency is basically uh, a result that started to identify which could be the potential European contribution. As I said, this is uh, again an infrastructure that uh, will not build by a single country, will need the international cooperation. So you see in the, in, in the slide, a couple of the elements that uh, uh, Europe is proposing uh, to, to for, for, for taking the lead. Uh, the first one is a propulsion uh, refueling uh, element uh, for, for the power and propulsion uh, bus, uh, including communication and, uh, and avionic bay. Uh, the second one is the actual habitat uh, that uh, we lost the astronaut uh, uh, by Orion when Orion uh, will be docked uh, to the space station. And as uh, you can see, uh, both of them uh, are planned to be realized in cooperation uh, by different agencies, and that means also by different industry. Uh, despite being candidate to be led by, by European Space Agency, there will be contribution uh, by Japan, there will be contribution by NASA. In particular, uh, the habitation uh, will be called, uh, it's already called uh, actually International Habitation Module because uh, it will be done in cooperation. And uh, talking about this habitation, uh, just a word, uh, it's clear that uh, uh, we, we, we heard today a lot of uh, uh, speech and uh, presentation about uh, uh, innovation, uh, inspiration for the future, etc. But I think it is right still to start from what we have learned in so many years in, in space. And so for the habitation module, which is uh, the focus 
in this moment of our company. Uh, you see the, the, the picture showing the, what we are today, which is the, the space station, one of the modules of the space station. I think you can have uh, immediately a look at that it's pretty crowded and uh, not, let's say, it does not seem an home, home in, in, uh, in the space. What uh, we have to do, we will have uh, to, and we already started, to design this module uh, in a pretty different way, uh, in particular from the point of view of the functionality and technologies, uh, but in particular from the point of view the, of the internal accommodation. What is being done on US? And uh, this is another type of a collaboration. I mean, I, I have tried to really give an idea of what is already going on in terms of international cooperation. So we saw that Europe participated with this industry to the, 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 the study at the space agency level. NASA has launched uh, in the same time, uh, what they call uh, the NASA Next Step program, step standing for uh, uh, space technology for exploration partnership. And in fact, this is based on a public private partnership model. Uh, it, it, it is planned to incorporate uh, uh, capabilities uh, to to put them into the deep space gateway and the deep space transport. And there are so far six companies contracted, four were since the very beginning, are the ones that you can read uh, on, on the chart, and two were awarded by an additional contract uh, recently. There are three main fields of uh, application, uh, an upgrade of, uh, in the next step two, which is uh, the current phase, an upgrade of the technical design, the interface standardization, and I have highlighted in yellow the word, the word uh, interoperability, because uh, cooperation and collaboration means to try also to standardize the interfaces. I mean, to avoid uh, that then you have equipment uh, coming from the Russian that want, that want uh, 28 volt DC, and then you have all the other, which is 120 volt DC and then ground demonstrator development. As I said, uh, we are cooperating uh, for next step. We were contacted by Orbital ATK and uh, Lockheed Martin since the very beginning. With Orbital in particular, we have uh, already a long-lasting cooperation because uh, we are building uh, 18 uh, units for the program Cygnus, so we are building all the pressurized cargo module. And uh, uh, we were contacted by Boeing uh, uh, at the beginning of Next Step 2 for, uh, for an additional contract. Uh, what we are doing? We are supporting the general deep space gay gateway architecture with the primary focus on the habitation. As I said before, habitation will be based on a flight-proven uh, know-how and capability that we have developed thanks to the activity on the ISS. Uh, but this is not enough. Uh, we will have to adopt a new solution uh, relying uh, on innovation and recent uh, research and development steps. Uh, in particular, uh, with Orbital, we are launching a, a concept about a so-called augmentation module for Orion. Uh, you see that these are modules planned to be in the infrastructure, but the idea with, uh, with the orbital, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, just to mention an example, is uh, to anticipate uh, the capability to have a Cygnus uh, pressurized module there and to dock to Orion, even in uh, its first mission, uh, to be able to augment uh, the, the volume of uh, Orion it's, itself. Uh, it's clear that every one of the partners uh, we are working on uh, has its own uh, uh, features and peculiarity. Uh, Orbital is relying on is a Cygnus program. Uh, 
uh, Boeing is uh, taking a, a reference to the capability they have developed uh, again in the International Space Station with their module. Uh, Lockheed Martin is uh, uh, the, the, the company that built Orion. So, of course, they have interest in uh, keeping some commonalities with Orion. So, we will tailor, and we are tailoring already to each of them, uh, uh, our know-how and our design, uh, but with the idea to build uh, something that can uh, fly pretty early uh, for, for this uh, deep space gateway. And, and we mentioned Orion. Orion is again another example of uh, international cooperation because uh, based on a barter agreement, between ESA and NASA. Uh, Orion, the capsule is produced in the United States, uh, but uh, at least for the first unit, uh, Europe uh, will be providing uh, the service module that is called the European service module, at least for the first, uh, first unit, then uh, we will see. And again, in that case, we have uh, Airbus, uh, our colleagues in Germany, uh, acting as a prime contractor, uh, and uh, Telesa in your space as a co-system and, and a major subco. We have talked so far mostly on the part uh, that will go to the deep space gateway, and uh, so the human space flight, uh, also because this is really the, the core of the activity that uh, we have always had in, in Torino. But the global exploration roadmap remind the important roles of the robotic mission. A robotic mission, by definition, are the ones that need to uh, be used as a precursor of uh, the human mission in, in, in case you don't have to, to risk uh, uh, too early uh, to put human in the loop. Uh, again, also in, in the global exploration roadmap, uh, you, you see in the table that uh, there is a list of all the planned lunar and uh, Mars mission uh, robotic exploration. Uh, there are a lot. Uh, I think that the, the, the reason for putting them in, in this table was uh, essentially to uh, in relation to the theme of this, uh, this presentation, uh, to focus your attention on the fact that there are several countries participating, and there are several missions uh, in which anyhow there are countries that are working together. Because uh, also the robotic missions are pretty complicated. Uh, ExoMars is an example from our side. We are this is an ESA program, European Space Agency, on which we are prime contractor, but it's done uh, in cooperation with the, with the Russian people. Uh, next year, we are expecting something like 30 people from uh, Lavochkin in Russia to come to Torino and stay there for months for the integration activity. Uh, and again, ExoMars, it's a mission uh, that uh, it's, it's preparing the Mars sample return, and Mars sample return, again, is under discussion between ESA and NASA. And to complete the overview, I have added this chart that I think link uh, to what uh, was discussed in the speech before. Uh, this is a bit more on the public-private uh, sector, uh, but is the idea, and what we are also starting to discuss in terms of asteroid mining, to build up a sort of a railroad uh, uh, for the space, uh, and uh, develop a route uh, in the solar system, uh, being capable of install a service station, uh, create new markets. Uh, and uh, was mentioned before, I think, that Luxembourg uh, initiative uh, uh, are, are supporting industry investing in uh, asteroid mining, and we are uh, specifically talking or starting to talk uh, with some of them, like planetary resources, etc. So, to complete the overview, uh, this is a sort of uh, roadmap that we built uh, based on what uh, we have uh, quickly passed before uh, of the different destination. Uh, uh, you see there is a layer in a lower orbit that offers several opportunities because uh, we can start to talk with China 
there is a commercial possibility to extend the ISS, uh, but if we look to the uh, exploration itself, uh, there are several possibilities that will have to be done step by step. Uh, and I think we can conclude by saying that uh, Exploration is difficult, it's challenging, so we'll be guided by large international cooperation in terms of agency, but with the involvement of their industry. Uh, it will be complemented uh, by commercial services and initiative, uh, but I think it's important to highlight also that uh, it can open uh, the way uh, really to newcomers from public and private sectors. So it's, it's really, I think uh, we can say that it's a Space exploration is, is for all. And uh, with this, I think that uh, what we can say at the end is that deep space adventure is beginning. And so we are looking forward really to the human settlement on Mars. And I think we are looking forward to live uh, there by 2117, let's say. So thank you for your attention.